Well, greetings, Town Meeting TV viewers. Uh, I'm Catherine Bloom, and I'm here with Sandra Dooley and Mary Beth McNulty, and we are here to talk about a show we've got coming up uh, called The Suffragist Reenactment Society. And this has been produced uh, by the Vermont Suffrage Centennial Alliance to honor and celebrate the 100th anniversary 101th, as it were, uh, of women getting the right to vote. We were going to tour it last fall, and of course, that couldn't happen. And so we took a, actually an uh, advantage of the year to do even more extensive rewrites and digging into the script. And, and we are here to celebrate women getting the right to vote. Um, but we, this uh, is an opportunity to do a little bit more of a deep dive into the origins of this piece and what we're trying to accomplish with it. And so, uh, Sandy, uh, let's start with you. And can you just give me a thumbnail, you know, three sentence bio of you first? And are you know, are you do you come out of women's history? Do you come out of politics? What, what and, and how did you get involved with that with the alliance? I come out of uh, human services, I politics somewhat. I was a city councilor in South Burlington. I was also on the Vermont Commission on Women for many years. Uh, and it was the um, communications coordinator, Lily Talbert at the commission who uh, recruited me to be uh, become part of the Alliance. So that's, uh, that's how that happened. I live in that's South great. Burlington. That's great. And who all is on the Alliance? Who, who comprises it? Uh, there are about 60 uh, between organizations and uh, individuals. We have people from, um, AAUW, the Peace and Justice Center, the law school, um, business and professional women, the um, Vermont Women's Fund, people from UVM, um, and uh, history professors, uh, lots of different people, uh, high school, especially social studies teachers, okay. um, runners. Um, well, this really, is quite. Uh, it's been great meeting all these new people. So this is quite a deep bench we have behind us. I don't, you know, those of us involved in the show aren't even completely aware of who all is out there making this happen. Um, so that's fantastic. And uh, Mary Beth, little, 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 same little bio on you. Who are you? Where'd you come from? What's going on? Um, so I am both an educator and a playwright, and I've been writing plays since I was um, quite young, and I excited to it's always fun to have a play produced and um i live in burlington i'm originally from the south um but i spent a number of years in los angeles as well but it's great Wonderful. to be in vermont and to have a vermont play to share with folks from across the state yeah uh, that's fantastic we're so glad you're here um sandy are you a native vermonter or are you a transplant as well I uh, was born and grew up in Pennsylvania, um, sort of the rural area, not far from Philadelphia, but I ended up at Middlebury College, and I've pretty much been in Vermont since then, much longer than I was in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, it was similar for me. So I grew up in Portland, Oregon, and uh, came to school on the East Coast, but beat it back to Seattle after I graduated and thought I was never going to go east of the Rockies again. And I've been in Vermont now almost 30 years and go figure things happen and life evolves. And my background is both in theater and uh, environmental activism primarily. And I have a history of doing one woman shows, which was sort of where the origin story of this piece comes from, because uh, I had done stuff around, I did an anti-war piece around the Iraq war. I did uh, a one woman show about climate change. And uh, and if I'm remembering correctly, there was a few years ago, Sandy, you contacted me <clears throat> to ask if I would be interested in doing a one woman show about the history of women's suffrage. And because I had been dealing with some health stuff, I said, Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think I know who would be appropriate for this and reach out to Mary Beth and her uh, theatrical partner, Laura Rold, who is, who's our director, who unfortunately could not be here today. Um, and Laura and Mary Beth have this little company called Complications Theater, and they seem to be very uh, uh, oriented towards women's narratives. And I had a feeling that this would be a, a, an appealing thing for you. Um, but Mary Beth, did you have to think about it at all before before you made any kind of decisions? Not a minute. <laughs> we 
sat down with you. And then when we sat down with Sandy, this is, as you say, uh, right up our alley um, because of the focus on telling women's stories. Uh, we, uh, Laura and I started the um, theater company because we felt like there was sort of a gap around new work um, or actually new work development. So there's lots of new work that happens in Vermont, a lot of fantastic playwrights, a lot of really exciting creative producers. But um, we, Laura and I are both familiar with a process of development. And so when we had the opportunity to really develop new work, uh, we were excited and thrilled to have the connection with you, Kathy, and then to be able to work with Sandy and all the other folks from the Suffrage Centennial. It's been just really exciting. So Sandy, where did the idea of a, a theater piece come from? Was it, was it part of the DNA of the, of the Centennial Alliance or was that something that popped up? Well, uh, in a surprising way. I think uh, two, two ways to describe the suffrage movement history is that it's complicated and it's it's largely untold. Uh, and we knew we needed a variety of vehicles to try to, we want the story to get to as many Vermonters as possible. And, uh, you know, lecture, well, of course, you know, there'll be lectures and we had a 5K run and things, um, but, the idea was sort of brainstorming and I, in the spring of 2019 that we came up with the idea of a play and uh, people liked it. And I thought of you, Kathy, and I said, I, I initiate, you know, I'd reach out to you. Um, and we're also very uh, woman focused in terms of wanting to, to showcase talent. And we knew there was a lot of talent around. So that's, um, and people have been, very enthusiastic about this project or whatever you want to call it this this uh, great endeavor um it's really our largest project uh which of course uh our whole sort of program got scaled back by uh the coronavirus yeah yeah and did you when when you conceived of it being a theater piece did you have any sense of what it would look like did you was there early imaginings of what this was going to be or did it was it was it uh, kind of a great big blank slate for you other than the one woman show idea um uh, it really was a blank slate we were ready to um find people that were willing to uh, fill in the canvas so to speak uh yeah. and i think we found some great people and Mary Beth, did you know much about women's history or the history of suffrage before you jumped into this? I think I just knew the big names that um, are sort of, uh, when I was growing up, your social studies textbook would tell the, your history book would have the, the story of everything. And women and people of color, their, that story was in a blue box <laughs> on one page in the whole chapter. And usually it was just like at the bottom of a page. So there would be like a paragraph and you, I would learn the name Elizabeth Cady Stanton or Susan B. Anthony. Um, and I, that was probably um, the, the extent of, um, you know, I knew some broad brush strokes, but certainly not all the rich stories that I know now. Yeah. And so what's this process been like for you? Did you have any kind of inkling of where you were going to start the story and and when and where did the notion of a reenactment group come from? Um, Which so, I think is phenomenally clever, by the way. Good job on that. Thank, you. thank you. So uh, I, as a as a playwright, I'm a bit of a nerd, and I love um, uh, you know I have a lot a number of stories that are in my own head that I want to tell, but then uh, this is probably the uh, the third piece that I've had um, where I've been approached and sort of commissioned, I've worked previously with um, uh, U32 High School. Um, my friend Aaron uh, is the theater teacher there. And um, so I've worked with young people in developing new work. Um, and, you know, so I, I, there's a research process, um, which I totally geek out on. And the suffrage and Sandy kept sending me, oh, here's a book. Here's a CD and 
I don't have a CD player and have to go and stick it in my car to listen to it. And here's a calendar. Um, so yeah. it was just wonderful to have the, the rich um, resources coming my way, along with lots of email links. Uh, there's been some great pieces in the New York Times that Sandy was always really good at sending my way. And um, so I, I had a really wonderful immersive time. And then, um, you know, I came up, I had, I knew, that I, there were so many stories, so there was no one story I wanted to tell. There was no one person that that really leapt out at me um, because it's so complex and it's we're talking the, over seventy two years of history. Um, and so the you know I had three or four ideas, and the idea that I kept coming back to was the idea of um, reenactors because. Um, you, you see the Civil War reenactors, and why do they do that? Well, because they're so excited about <laughs> telling this story. Um, and I thought, well, what would the equivalent be for the suffragist? And um, and it just kept making me laugh, the idea that these that, that passion could go into reenactments. Um, yeah. And it was a way, you know, it gave me, uh, because of my experience developing new plays, I knew I had to have sort of a framing device for telling a bigger story. Mm -hmm. uh, so it gave me a really nice framing device for pulling in lots of little individual stories. Which you know, I can imagine is part of the challenge. You're talking over 70 years of history and you're talking uh, history that happened all over the country. And that you, know, you had to encompass the Civil War, you had to encompass World War I, you had to, there was an enormous amount going on in American history during that time. And, uh, and how do you condense it all down? So I think, you know, and what people will see when they come see the show is that the, the, the basic premise is that we are a reenactment group and we're trying to figure out one story to reenact for a 4th of July celebration in the town where we're, wherever it is that we're traveling to. And there's a lot of back and forth around wh who are the most who are the most visible members of the suffragist movement, who, um, what are the most compelling narratives, what's exciting, what's disturbing. Um, and so there are the three characters in the play. I play Deborah, the president of the society, who is clearly um, representative of a somewhat older generation of women who are, who might not be as, um, infused with an understanding of intersectional social justice. Uh, and then we have Tori, who is our historian, and then we have a young woman um, played by Julia Sayas, who is um, very excited about this and loves the costumes and loves to geek out on it. But she is definitely, uh, I think, more conscious of the the dark undercurrent of what you know the history and the, there was racism and there was <clears throat> uh, a, a lot a, a lot more going on than just a bunch of women trying to get the right to vote. Um, in thinking about that whole history, Mary Beth, how, when, you know, the, the play has changed a lot from when we were going to produce it last fall to this year. Um, but when you, when you began thinking about those, those uh, lesser known thread, narrative threads in the suffrage movement, how did you, how were you wrestling with them? How did you think about trying to bring in all that stuff as well? So it's not just a, a long history, it's a deep history. So I had to, um, in conversation with the Centennial folks, we knew that we wanted it to be more than just white ladies history. Uh, and um, during my writing time, um, there was a lot going on in our country um, related to terrible events, uh, terrible racism. And so, there really has been a reckoning and continues to be a reckoning. And um, one of the wonderful things about I'm telling this historic story, but the characters, the character you play, Kathy, is in America now. And so there's this wonderful, um, because it's both the past and the present, um, I'm, I'm able to weave that together. And then we start to see oh, those conflicts of the past have not really been addressed and resolved. And here we are today with um, some of these same issues. And so how do these, um, these parallel stories really intersect 
and and what is it that we can walk away from um, both thinking about the past and thinking about its impact on us today. Uh, so I feel really lucky actually that I had this this gift of time um, that an added year gave me because it's hard to write about something that's currently happening. You actually need a little bit of distance in order to understand what you're looking at. You know, uh, when um, when um, uh, George Floyd was murdered um, and we all saw it like it was it was really close and really hard to have some perspective and so this year has allowed me I mean it's still really close but at least um, a little extra time allowed me to uh, to reflect and get some distance and try to think about um, how this is a this has been a problem in America from the get-go uh, this racism in our country and this white supremacy and how can I speak to that as a white privileged woman here living in Vermont. Um, and another thing that the Centennial folks were able to do is we, and Kathy, you've been part of these conversations, thankfully, um, the Centennial folks have been able to help us connect with uh, women of color um, to support that process um, as, um, as bringing a perspective that I don't have. Uh, and that's been really wonderful. And I think the play is the richer for bringing in more of those stories and more of those perspectives that um, so that we can have a richer story to tell and think about today. So I'd, I'd like to add like another, I was gonna, uh, Kathy, go and that is that the whole issue of voting has taken on um, just so much more controversy and importance. We had the effect of COVID that um, radically changed how people vote and, and in virtually the entire country, access to the ballot box was greatly improved. And then uh, we've had a lot of backlash. And that leads me to what I left out earlier and that is the role of the League of, of Women Voters of Vermont in, uh, Really, they have, we are a project of the, the Alliance, the Vermont Suffrage Centennial Alliance is a project of the League of Women Voters of Vermont and their president, Sue Racanelli has, has been the devoted director of this, this process. But um, the more between the social justice issues that Mary Beth talked about and then the voting issues, which are very much a part of the social justice yeah. issues uh, became, front and center, um, the more important to go forward with this play um, became for all of us. Yeah. And do, do you find that the conversations that the characters in the play are having around how to address these issues are reflected in the conversations you're having with the, with the coalition that you're, you're doing or the organizing with? I have to tell you, Kathy, I haven't read the play in, in its most recent version. Oh, I'm wow. OK. <laughs> I, That's I, very uh, exciting. So uh, I can't really respond to that, but um, maybe maybe Mary Beth can or whatever. But I'm I'm really, you know, the creative process has really been with Mary Beth and, and Laura and the cast. So um, I appreciate the question. Perhaps you can speak to that, Kathy, having been um, the nice piece about being a playwright and developing a play as I was uh, referring to earlier is you have a, dra a draft process. So um, I write alone, which is fun because I have that introverted side of me and then I have friends. And so I get to bring the draft to you and Kathy, you've been there through several of those drafts. So maybe you can speak to that evolution of um, thinking about voting and, and how the play intersects or um, reflects some of the, the larger conversations we're having. Well, I, the thing that I was really struck by from the very beginning is this question of, yes, we wanna tell these stories that are the, the, both the told and the untold, we wanna hear about everything. And we want to be able to highlight all of the women of color who were deeply, deeply involved in the suffrage movement. Then there's, but there's the challenge of the fact that we are in Vermont and it's a very white state and the pool of performers that we have to draw from 
is a very white, small and white pool of people. And so they're wrestling with that question of how do we tell everybody's story when we don't represent everybody mm -hmm. has been a really fascinating question. And I think it's also one thing I've run into as a theater maker is that you don't wanna just hire someone because of the color of their skin. And if you need an actor of color, but there isn't, you don't find the right person, do you take someone, what do you do? Because you have the opportunity to hire whoever you can find who's willing to participate. But if they're not an adept performer because that's not their background, then you're putting them in a position of not being able to um, only fully realize your vision, but also see someone who is not um, a trained performer have to struggle with the with the content. And you know, there are people who are naturals, but they're also, I mean, I, you know, there's there's a challenge right there. You can't teach someone to do something that they have to do while they're doing it. And so how do you know that question of do we try to write actors characters of color and try to find the actors, or do we write for the people who we know we've got? And I know that was a big piece of the tension in a lot of the early piece, parts of development. And um, I don't actually remember how you landed on the solution of just resting with the, with the white ladies, but finding ways to talk about everybody else. So one, uh, um, yes, uh, that conversation was certainly part of um, those earlier drafts and the um, suffrage alliance, uh, participants who would, would come and because a commissioned piece, you were part of the process as well. And there was certainly this uh, excitement over, can we, can we have um, an actor of color? How do we, and, and how do we tell these stories of the women of color in the movement? Because we knew we needed to hear those stories. Um, we did not wanna be part of silencing or ignoring or erasing any of those stories. Um, so that was a, a, a tricky conversation, but the more we talked about the racism, the more, you know, Laura and I went back and forth of, the racism is a white lady problem. Hmm. <laughs> we are the ones who need to do the work. And so um, more than the, the producing, pro the producer problem of finding an actor of color, um, which is certainly something that we need to continue to work and, and think about and, um, and train and have conversations with a lot of women. Um, more than that, the conversation shifted to, the content is that white women need to do better telling this story. And so um, that became central to the work and um, what was so wonderful about having our readers, um, the readers of color, Bernice and um, Catherine Dunny um, and then Judy Dow um, were our readers and, and they were part of the process of helping us recognize where that tension is yeah. <laughs> and recognize that um, start, how do, how do we move the conversation forward and how do white women do the work? Yeah, And so that became, it became really important that white women be on stage and white women call each other out on the racism that we need to address. And so um, as much as I love working with a diverse group of actors, this play was really about white women doing the work. And yeah. um, that's, it became just, that just became more clear as the drafts um, became tighter and tighter. Uh, and so I, I think that, um, I think we, we hit upon, you know, the content led us to that, that place in our casting. Yeah. Um, and, and then we realized, oh, this is really an, a generational conflict. And so then we had to think about how do we bring in um, different, uh, the, multi, the multiple generations who need to figure this out together. Yeah. And um, so having Julia come in as an actor and, and tell me, this character isn't really speaking. <laughs> like, again, 
was a great note. Um, and I, I, that became just really exciting in a way to get women to do the work, white women to do the work they needed to do. Yeah, it's funny that I definitely, I don't, not having kids myself, I don't get to hear. <laughs> I don't know how the kids are talking these days. And um, it, it, when my husband is running lines with me every once in a while, he'll run across something. He's like, what does that mean? And I'm like, I had to look it up too on Urban, Urban Dictionary. Um, Mary Beth, if there's something you think you're gonna really come away from or come away with from this whole process, mm. what do you think that's gonna be? Oh, I have this. I've thought this a lot. Um, <laughs> As someone who also wants to be engaged in a wide variety of social justice issues um, from climate to um, race, to discrimination, to immigration, um, to um, sexism, you name it, I, I, I want to do that work. I, um, and it's exhausting and disheartening. Um, when you watch the news and and you see that we're not making the progress that needs to happen now. Yeah. Um, on that calendar that Sandy sent to me, there there was this line of uh, working for progress for seven over 72 years. And and I, I carry that with me that we may not see what we want to see in our lifetime. Yeah. Um, and the story um certainly the stories of the black women, the suffragists who showed up and fought for women's rights and then were treated with horrible racism, but kept showing up and doing the work, even though you may never see what you want to see in your lifetime. And there were so many women, Charlotte Woodward is the only person at Seneca Falls who could have voted um, in 19, in the 1920 election, um, all the other women were didn't survive to to be able to vote, um, and that is a lesson of this this work is is ongoing, and you do the work, and you don't give up when it's hard, and you don't give up when you don't see the progress that you want and need to see. Um, that I was that was not the lesson I thought. <laughs> I would learn going into it, but maybe having that extra year of writing yeah. helped me yeah. see that more, um, that we have to just keep showing up and we have to keep doing the work. I just finished reading John Lewis's autobiography and that's exactly what he says. He just has this very long vision of, you know, you may have planted a tree that you're never going to see in its full glory, but it's worth, it's worth it because it's the right thing to do. And I think Black Americans who've been doing this work know that lesson and mm -hmm. have known that lesson. And I'm just, I just got the memo. <laughs> right. um, so we're almost out of time. Um, we want to let everybody know this. So the show opens this Saturday at Main Street Landing in Burlington on October 2nd. Um, and then is going to be touring the state. And if folks go to the ticketing website, which is tickets.catamountarts.org. And I know that our buddy Kevin from Town Meeting TV is gonna flash this stuff up on the screen. Um, people will be able to see uh, the entire tour schedule and tickets are free, right, Sandy? Yes, and people will have to wear masks mm -hmm. and they have to be vaccinated or uh, they can have a COVID test within 72 hours. Yeah. So and, um, we're really trying to make things safe because we know People still have concerns about uh, the safety of being indoors in groups. Yeah, and we're performing without masks. You can see our faces because we've discovered rehearsing with masks. It's a big pain and, and you definitely don't want to watch a show where people's faces are covered like this because it's not any fun. Um, all of you and, have been vaccinated. Yeah, we've been all been vaccinated and we get tested every week. And so we're as, we, we the performers are as safe as we can be. And we actually have masks that we'll be wearing when we're interacting with the audience up close and then we'll take them down for when we're we're on stage um uh anything is it, either we're so we're you got about a minute left anything either one of you want to say in conclusion about this whole process or sandy anything that you've learned coming out of this 
Well, first of all, what we didn't talk about was how interactive the play is with the audience. Yeah. We may not have time to get into that, but I want the viewers to know about that. Um, I've I've learned, uh, I, I couldn't begin to tell you what I've learned because I'm totally new to this, but it's it's been fun. And, uh, and I love the idea of tripping around Vermont and meeting people and, uh, and seeing how they respond to the play. Yeah. Uh, so that's my sure. parting word. All right, beautiful. Mary Beth, anything else you wanna say before we sign off? Oh, it's just great to have live theater in our lives again. That is very, very true. And I am, I'll tell you, I am so honored to be working with this group of people. And I don't know that I've ever had, um, I've ever been in love with the entire crew as much as I am with this bunch. And the, it's such a, been such a feminist production, top to bottom, start to finish. And we, uh, the level of support and love and open-heartedness that everyone has brought to all of this has been just extraordinary. And I am deeply, deeply honored to be a part of it all. So everyone out there in TV land, I hope you will come see the show. And you, you know, if, it, if Burlington sold out and you live somewhere else, make a date of it, travel, travel, have a fun time, get picnics, get an Airbnb, come see us all over the state. We'll be everywhere from Newport to Brattleboro and Bennington. So we hopefully will cover just about everything. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. Sandy, Mary Beth, thank you. And uh, we will see you at the theater. <laughs>